Proxmox is for everyone who wants an easy to manage smart home, but on the other hand, also wants maximum flexibility and the possibility to expand their smart home server with other systems. Very, very practical. Proxmox can be installed and set up super easily. However, it is of course also practical. If we have a smart home where all components somehow work together, that we have all the data from Proxmox and Home Assistant to know what the higher level computer is currently doing. Especially things like hard drives, network load, um, or CPU usage are of course very, very practical if you can bring them into Home Assistant or possibly have the ability to dynamically power up or down other VMs running on the same computer. This is precisely what makes a virtual system so special and, and that's why I want to show you two ways in this video on how to integrate Proxmox into Home Assistant, allowing you to remotely control your Proxmox and an, from Home Assistant. Everything else after the intro. Enjoy! As mentioned, Proxmox is a great way to start virtualizing which a computer because it is open source and, above all, e free to use. The whole thing can really be set up using a USB stick within 5 minutes and, thanks to the Proxmox helper scripts, you can start your own VMs with a single console command or get a complete Home Assistant OS up and running super quickly. There is actually even an official integration from Home Assistant itself showing how you can import Proxmox data such as CPU, RAM, network usage and many other things into Home Assistant. However, it's not as straightforward as it initially seems because currently there is no way to set it up through the graphical interface. How this can still be done through a graphical interface I will show you in part two. First of all, let's start with the native Home Assistant solution which offers the advantage that you can solve it directly through the official Home Assistant method. But I would say, let's just jump onto my computer and then I'll show you how to set everything up. First of all, it's Tob. It's important to know that, as mentioned, you cannot use the official method through the GUI, that is, the graphical interface. Accordingly, we need to install an add-on in the standard Home Assistant US so that we can tinker with the home system files. To do this, we go to the add-on store and install the file editor. Once the installation is complete, we can enable the watchdog and display it in the sidebar to click on start here and then open the file editor directly. After that, we click on the folder icon at the top and on configuration.yaml. Here, we then insert these lines, which I have also linked for you in the video description below. And then we just need to enter our information. In my case, it's the IP address of the Proxmox system, the username, which is root, and my temporary root password. And next, the nodes or VMs or containers that we want to see in Home Assistant. You can always see the ID at the beginning in this Proxmox system. So if we want to bring the Debian system into Home Assistant as an example, we need the ID 100 and we can also see at the top here that it is a VM or virtual machine. So we delete the container ID here, replace VMs with 100, and the node name, which we find at the top here, in my case, Proxmox, and we enter it here. Before we can save this, we need to add one more thing here, namely, verify SSL, which we need to set to false. This is simply because Proxmox me, by default, always operates over a secure or SSL protected connection, but usually uses a self-generated certificate. Accordingly, the connection would fail because it checks whether this is a verified SSL certificate, which it is not. That's why we disable the whole thing like this. And for most of you, this means you can enter it exactly as is, one-to-one. -one. After that, we click here on save, on settings, on system, on this on off switch and then on restart home assistant and confirm the whole thing once. Once the restart is complete, we can then go to settings, to devices and services here. And if everything worked, we now see Proxmox VE here. We can click on it, see an entity here and then we also see Proxmox Debian here. We can press on it, go to she settings here and then we see the operating status displayed here, meaning that the system is currently in operation or has started. As you can see, the whole thing is 
I want to say cautiously, uh, relatively sparse. What you can do here is not particularly special, so we will look at option two because a clever user sat down and rewrote this integration a bit. However, it should be approached with caution as he himself notes since he developed it himself and it is not officially an approved by Home Assistant. I have tested it, however, and can say that it at least works. So I have no problem using it to this extent. I will definitely link it for you in the video description below. To install this integration, however, you need the Home Assistant Community Store. I will now briefly show you how to install it. If you need a detailed guide for this, I have already created one and linked it for you up here. So we go to the Hacks page, then here to download Hacks, and then we add the Hacks repository with this link here. I simply enter my Home Assistant URL here, click on Update, Open Link, ik, and then on Add. Afterwards, I can install Get Hacks here. Start it directly, and as soon as I see in the log that the installation is complete, I can go to Settings System, then press the button here again and restart Home System, confirming it once. Now I have at least installed Hacks. Now we need to set everything up by going to Settings, Devices and Services, clicking on Add Integration, searching for Hacks, clicking on it, confirming all these checkboxes, pressing OK, copying this code, pasting it on the GitHub page, confirming it, and then we're done with HackS. Now I will remove the Proxmox VE integration from my settings for security. So I delete all these lines, let's save everything, and restart again. Additionally, I also remove the HackS add-on by clicking on Add-ons, and then clicking Uninstall, and Uninstall at Get HackS. And then we can finally install the integration. For that, we go to this repository here. I will, of course, link it again in the video description. Here we need to press this button and click on Open Link to add it to Hacks. Click on Add. And ideally, the page should open again directly here in Home Assistant itself. Here we can then click on Download on Download. And then we see that a plus one has already popped up under Settings. We can then click on it by pressing Settings and then confirm the restart here. And that's basically it. We have now installed the integration for Proxmox. We now need to configure it once more. To do this, go to Devices and Services, no? and then click on Add Integration. And then we can um, enter Proxmox here. As you can see, the icon has now changed here. And when we hover over it, we also see the text displayed custom integration that replaces a core component. So we have now replaced the default Proxmox VE. With this integration here, which unlike the native one, we can also set up via the GUI. So if we press here now, we are directly shown all the settings. Here we can now enter the IP address, check the SSL certificate, disable it again, and then we have various options to connect Proxmox with Home Assistant. We could now, as we did with the normal integration, log in with a username and password. Alternatively, we can also go into Proxmox itself, then go to Data Center and Users to create a dedicated Home Assistant user. As you can see, I have already done this here. We could even go so far as to create custom user roles or, and user groups through groups or roles in here. Everything is explained in great detail in the GitHub repository, um, including what settings you can, must, and are allowed to configure uh, and what you can do with these roles. Let's quickly go through what you can do here. So we create a new role by clicking on roles and then create. Then we can give it a name. I'll just copy this one here and then we can select what permissions we want. We need VM, audit, then sys audit, and we also need data store, audit. Then we click on create. Then we do the whole thing again. This time for node management, sys power management, create again on create. This time, sys modify. And finally, VM, power management, create. After we have created all the roles, we need to create a group by clicking on groups and then create. We give the group the name home assistant and click on create. Now we need to assign the roles we just created to the group. To do this, we click on permissions, add, and then on group permission, setting the path, to a slash. So for everything in our data center, the group Home Assistant 
and then we can select the roles all with Home Assistant. So audit, then click on add. Now again, add group permissions, again slash the group Home Assistant. This time, Home Assistant node power management. Group permission slash Home Assistant update group permission slash Home Assistant and power management add. So now our group has all the permissions it needs. And now we can create a user by clicking on users add, give them a name, home assistant. Here we select Proxmox VE authentication server. Then we need to give it a password. Ideally, of course, a very, very secure password. Confirm the password again, and then select home assistant as the group here. Important, the user should never expire. And then we can add it here as well. To create the optimal login workflow, we can also create an API token. For this, we go to API tokens, click on add, select the user home assistant and can freely assign the token ID. I will call it home assistant here. And then I want it to have the same rights as the user. Therefore, this checkbox needs to be unchecked. Again, set expire to never, now the wall, so it never expires. And then click on add here. Now, a token is displayed here. Important, you will only see it displayed once. So a brief interjection before we can um, finally integrate Proxmox into Home Assistant, we unfortunately still need to add another permission. When we click on add here and then group permissions, we actually need to select the Home Assistant group and then the administrator role again. I know this is quite counterproductive after we have just meticulously set the individual permissions here. However, it currently seems there is no other way. As soon as this changes, I'll add a comment below, Bois, and then you can simply delete this permission here and probably you'll need to create an extra role again to make it work. Now we can actually integrate the whole thing into Home Assistant. For this, it's best to close the entire pop-up again and click on Add Integration, search for Proxmox, and then we enter the IP address again, disable SSL certificate verification, the uh, username we just created, in my case, Home Assistant, and the token name that we could assign freely. In my case, it was also Home Assistant Nick. And finally, the secret, which is the token value created by Proxmox. Now we need to change the section at the bottom here because we are in PVE. And ideally, we will then see a list of nodes displayed here of all the virtual machines that we can now add. And of course, also of all the storages we have. Additionally, we can enable or disable the physical disk information. I'm going to activate everything possible here and click OK. And afterwards, as we are already used to, we can add sections to the item. I'll skip that here and click Finish. And then you can actually see the integration displayed directly. This time we can click on it and then see the individual items um, displayed again. The cool thing is we can now actually click on this Debian VM, for example, which we had set up in earlier. And then we can see all the sensors here such as CPU usage, free RAM, used RAM, health, last start, and so on. Here we also have disabled items like free disk space and so on. Personally, I'm not interested in those, but if you would like to have the used disk space displayed as well, you can click on the settings check mark and, and then click on enable here. Then it takes 30 seconds and from then on, this value would also be filled in here, just like it is for the controls. And I actually find that the most exciting part so we can activate the resume button here, for example. Then the shutdown button, the restart button, and maybe also the start button. And after we have activated all of them, as mentioned, we need to wait a little moment. And then we will see the controls displayed here, as well as the used disk space. And the cool thing about it is we can now actually remotely control this Debian VM completely from Home Assistant. So if I now go into Proxmox data center and access this Debian VM, you can see that it has just started and is running diligently here. But now I will go into Home Assistant and click the shutdown button. And ideally, I can now go into the console and see, oh, it, it's not running anymore. And the status has now updated here as well. So it says stopped. Similarly, the icon on this page has turned gray. Now we want the Debian VM to run again. That means I go here to resume, click the button once, and then I go back to Proxmox, and ideally the check mark will turn green here. Or the status will change to running. If we open the console again now, we see 
that the computer is currently booting up in the background. That means it worked. So now we could dynamically start and stop VMs from Home Assistant via automation, query the status, and so on and so forth. This means we would have our own little data center, which we could theoretically also equip with notifications, for example. So if my VM should crash, we can send a notification directly to the phone via automation, simultaneously restart the VM immediately, and so on and so forth. So there are really very, very many possibilities that you have with this. Feel free to try it out and, of course, write your feedback in the comments. I would be very happy about that. Also, as in almost every video, I would like to reward my most loyal viewers here again with an Amazon voucher, which I will display here. If you're watching this video a bit more later and therefore didn't have the chance to redeem it quickly enough, then feel free to click on subscribe and get a notification next time. Additionally, you help me improve this statistic a bit. I really thank everyone who has watched this video up to this point and who constantly supports me and who is also willing to press the subscribe button. And with that, I don't want to stretch the video too long, mainly to express my gratitude. And with that, I want to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If so, I would really appreciate a rating and then I would say, see you in the next video. Take care. Until then, take it easy and goodbye.